and welcome back to video number eight, our third and final, thankfully, I'm sure most of you are thinking, installment on infection control, okay? In our last video, we left off with pathogens. It's a fancy word. It means harmful organisms that cause disease or infection. Pathogens, okay? We use anything of them as germs, okay? There are three types of pathogens you will need to understand on your test. There's bacterial pathogens, cosi, bacilli, and spirilla. Again, bacterial pathogens, cosi, bacilli, and spirilla. There's viral pathogens, and there's fungal or fungus pathogens, such as tinea. Tinea is a nice fancy medical Latin term for ringworm. I guarantee you, you will see a question about tinea or ringworm at, on your test, maybe one, maybe three, but there's no way you're not gonna be tested on this. Starting right off with bacterial pathogens. Some simple definitions about things. Bacilli. Bacilli are rod-shaped bacteria. They are the world's most common bacteria. They are the bacteria that moves by their own ability, called cilia or flagella, like little whip-like hairs that come out from the bacteria, allow it to move around. There's not a whole lot of questions on your test. If there are questions, that pretty much covers it. They are the world's most common bacteria. They are rod-shaped. They move around by themselves. Next is spirilla. We get the English word spiral. For the wine drinkers among us, like a corkscrew, a spiral, spirilla. They are corkscrew shaped and they cause sexually transmitted diseases like syphilis. Again, this is not medical school. You probably will not see a question on your test about this other than the basic shape. Spirilla, spiral shaped. Where you will be tested heavily is the cosi bacteria. Okay, cosi bacteria, and here's a question they love on page 77 in your textbook. The cosi bacteria may appear alone or in groups. Now, I've argued at state board meetings, well, any bacteria could appear alone or in groups. When bacteria shows up, it's alone. It multiplies, it has a group. They don't care what I think. They don't care what you think. They only care what they think. And they say, this bacteria could appear alone or in groups. The answer is cosi on page 77. Now, for a much deeper dive into this, you might want to go to 2022 esthetician exam questions and answers. It's a much longer in-depth video. It doesn't make any difference. The subject is the same. The bacteria causing pneumonia, the bacteria causing syphilis, it's all the same thing, okay? We're gonna move on to dandruff because dandruff is heavily tested. Probably at least three questions on dandruff. The fancy medical term for dandruff is pityriasis, P-I-T-Y. R-I-A-S-I-S, pityriasis. There are two types. There's pityriasis capitis simplex. Classic, simple, white, scaly dandruff. Right? Pityriasis is dandruff. Capitis is the medical Latin term for our head. Simplex, simple in English. Okay, simple head dandruff. Classical white, scaly, caused from many things. Excessive shampooing, quick climate change, if you get on the plane in Rio de Janeiro on January 1st, it's 100 degrees, and land in Alaska, it's 100 degrees below zero, that's a very extensive climate change. People frequently get dandruff. Cold weather can cause dandruff. Chemical services, relaxers, permanent waves, bleaching, all these things can cause dandruff. It's not really a major problem. You recommend a correct shampoo and the problem goes away. The more serious dandruff problem is called pityriasis steatoides. Pityriasis steatoides, it is a greasy, waxy, oily, scaly dandruff. It requires medical intervention. Do not try to deal with this in the salon. You will spread it all over the client's head. You'll spread it to yourself. Okay? Pityriasis steatoides, a greasy, waxy, oily, scaly dandruff requiring medical intervention. And the big one on the test, tinea, also known as ringworm. There are at least nine types of ringworm. You only have to know five. Barbers have to know all nine. You guys get off the hook, you only need to know five. And they are tinea pedis, ringworm of the feet. The Latin words for feet, P-E-D-I, like the pedals of your bicycle, okay? Those of you who speak Spanish, it's a little bit easier because it's very similar to the Spanish word. Tinea pedis, 
okay? Ringworm of your feet, well, commonly known in English as athlete's feet. Then there's tinea manis, ringworm of your hands, like the word manicure, the Latin for hand, man, okay? Tinea manis is ringworm of your hand. Tinea capitis, again, ringworm of your head, characterized by red papules at the opening of the hair follicles. Tinea barbie, ringworm of the bearded areas of the face and neck, tinea barbie. Now, if you say to yourself, I don't care because I only do women, women have a bearded area of their face. Obviously not as many hairs as on men, but those of you who do a lot of waxing, it's a very profitable service in the salon, you will notice women, especially as they pass through menopause, will start to come in to have their chin waxed or their mustache waxed or their sideburn waxed. Women do have hair follicles on their face and they can get infected with tinea barbie. And finally, their current favorite, doesn't mean it'll be their favorite next month, but currently it's their favorite, Tinea favosa, F-A-V-O-S-A, -A, also known as honeycomb ringworm, is a dry, I'm going to read you what the book says, dry sulfur, cup-like structures on the scalp emitting a strong sulfur-like odor. One more time. Dry cup-like structures on the scalp emitting a strong sulfur-like odor. Of course, I had the person call me to tell me that she was a teacher and honeycomb was cereal. Yeah, I, I know that. Right? It is also the sort of the slang English term for tinea favosa, which is a big problem. It's a ringworm infection of your scalp. Moving right along, we're going to wrap this up with federal agencies. Guaranteed one to three questions on your test. And remember, it only takes one point to fail your test. Okay. Government agencies. There are a couple of things our government does really, really well. One is impose taxes, and once you've seen your paycheck, you'll know what I'm talking about. And two is create agencies. There are hundreds, maybe, maybe thousands of agencies by the government. There's three that we need to understand for our test. Actually, I stand corrected. Four. Okay. EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. EPA. It's very easy. If the question has to do with cleaning products, the answer is EPA. Simple. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, cleaning products. Move on. FDA, Food and Drug Administration. Another easy one. If the question deals with cosmetics, the answer is FDA. Now, cosmetics can be anything that we put on ourselves because we think it makes us look better. Lipstick, mascara, soap, toothpaste, shaving cream, suntan lotion, all of these things the FDA says are cosmetics. If it's a cosmetics question, answer is FDA. Center for Disease Control, CDC. They issue warnings known as standard precautions. For those who've been out of school for a while, they used to be called universal precautions. Same thing, new name. The EPA issues what are known as standard precautions. Standard precautions will tell you to assume all human blood and body fluids are potential source of infection. Assume all human blood and body fluids are potential source of infection. You cut your client, put on gloves. Do not come in contact with the blood without gloves on. Finally, OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Now, OSHA has over 3,000 employees and issues hundreds of, of edicts a year, none of which you have to know. All you have to know is that the Occupational Safety and Health Association okay, requires that the salon have on hand for clients and employees to read, if they want to, called a material safety data sheet. Now you see? You thought you knew the answer, didn't you? It's no longer called a material safety data sheet, although I recently have teachers argue with me. In your book on page 72, it tells you that in June of 2015, the name was changed from material safety data sheet, MSDS, to safety data sheet, SDS. The question is on a lot of tests, ladies and gentlemen, okay? The safety data sheet required by OSHA this document tells you what the manufacturer knows about the product, including handling instructions, 
disposal instructions, storage instructions, and poison control. In other words, do not flush this down the drain. Uh, what do you do if the baby drinks it? Okay, do you induce vomiting or do you have them drink milk? Do you go to the hospital? It tells you disposal instructions, poison control, handling instructions. Avoid temperatures below 30 or above 100. And what you do, the safety data sheet provided by the manufacturer for every product in the salon. And there you have it, okay? Infection control, the most heavily tested section you will have on your exam. In the future, we're gonna go on to hair color, which is probably more interesting to most people, hair cutting, hair styling, and chemical hair services. If you have any questions, please give us a call, 760-534-4434, or visit us on our website, cosmetologystateboardexam.com. There's some free practice test questions. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe button, and please send us your comments so we know what you're thinking and what videos you would like to see in the future. Okay, thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you again.